With the F1 strategy group and 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 yeah. and, and the power players of F1, um, and and I just want to take some time to yeah, to talk about that in detail. So, uh, yeah, Mike, if you want to load that up for me, please. I will load it for you. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I guess so. Yeah. So what we're looking at? He, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good. Hold on. Yeah. Hang on. Oh, sorry. So we're we're looking at the the F1 strategy group. It, it, it's zoom that out a little bit. No, chill. Chill, 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 chill. Chill, oh, chill. Okay. Chill, 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 chill. Anyway, so whatever you you get the gist out of here. So so the F1 strategy group was was put together uh, not too long ago at the beginning of uh, of last year, I think, um, to to deal with the growing demands of making changes to F1 and okay. making changes um, occur in a streamlined fashion, let's oh, say. Shit. Um, and, 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 and the F1 strategy group, the thing is that it, it was formed as a, as a good idea, I suppose, uh, first. But um, basically right now what we have is three interest groups that hold the, the the voting power in the F1 strategy and that, and, and that that's what we see here right um so the F1 strategy group is basically composed of three things of, of of yeah of, of three segments here that have that hold equal power so on one end we have the commercial rights rights holder right here this guy. uh re well represented by the formula 1 management who is basically Bernie Ecclestone um FIA the the, the France-based Fédération Internationale de l'Automobile, or whatever, so the International Federations of, of Automobiles, and they are the rule makers of F1, the mm. ones that, and the ones that actually own the rights to, to, to for anything to be called Formula One. Um, and then the teams. So, so there's uh, okay. right, and each one of those Formula segments. One, Formula One Teams Association. Oh, this I put, I put that logo there, uh, but that that this association doesn't exist anymore. Okay. FOTA, uh, the Formula One Teams Association, it existed prior to the to the F1 strategy group, and it basically was a, a, an association of F1 teams, and they and each one of them had had like a very democratic like each team got a vote, but then they couldn't agree on anything because it turns out that the better teams. And the teams with a lot of money were being outnumbered in votes by teams that were sort of, you know, midway and down. Obviously, as it would happen, because you can only have so many winners, right? right? Like, so if a team is doing like very success, it is very successful one year, they're definitely going to have like different interests than a team that's at the bottom of the pile. So FOTA did not work because they couldn't agree on, on anything at all. Right. So to replace FOTA and to and, and to fill the gap. They thought of this, of this whole thing, of the F1 strategy group, composed Clearly not just really not working. Yeah, either. well, composed of not just teams, but uh, you know, an associate, uh, a group of teams, the FIA and the and and the commercial rights holder, the Formula One management, um, and, and, and it's very interesting, and I wanted to just take some time to 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 go through the power players in each one of these uh, of these segments because. What's going to happen and what we're, we're going to hear this entire year and next year is mm -hmm. that these names are going to come up over and over and over again because the way that yeah. the sport is going to go, the way that the, if F1 has a future, it is going to, dis, uh, it's going to, it's going to rely heavily on, on these big power players making decisions for everything else. Um, so let's start. Yeah, I think I can go and... <clears throat> that really didn't do much, but basically I wanted to like go and talk about FOM. So FOM, we know, we know, we all know him. We, we we've been talking about him for as long as he's been on top. So Bernie Ecclestone, he's the CEO of Formula One Management, among other things. Um, From a distance, he looks like Skeletor. He he is. He does have that does Mumra kind of something. appearance to him. <laughs> <laughs> he's the, in his eighties. FOM like. CEO, among many other things, depending who you are. 
Yeah, <laughs> a lot of people don't like this guy. Oh, really? Yeah. People call it, you know, that he. What is your opinion on him? The F one Supremo, the, the 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 Supremo. The, yeah, the Supremo, the the Ringmaster. You know what? Okay, he's got he's, a lot of powerful friends. Yeah, uh, okay. He's if anything you can you can say about Bernie Ecclestone is that he is a negotiator. He's mm-hmm. he's a he's a okay. he's a yeah. he's a negotiator extraordinaire. Okay. And at the beginning cuz the the reason why he got this high of position of power is at one point they were trying the, the teams were trying to get together uh, and basically like n- like deal with the right holders of of the TV transmissions and and okay. and, and and they were they were going to try to get together and talk to them and like try to get some better terms but he was chief like he was a chief of like the the commission of the teams and he basically like convinced all the teams and this was back in the 70s he's like don't worry don't worry you know you know how I'm better at negotiating than you guys are don't worry like I'll make let me talk to them I'll work out a good deal mm. for all of us mm. <laughs> so then he went on this separate meeting um, and he negotiated, he, he basically didn't negotiate on behalf of the teams in general, but just out of himself. And he bought, he bought the commercial rights to formula one, like basically wholesale as one package. He was like, don't worry, just give it to me. But about 100 million or something. I think that they, they, they asked for or something or a hundred grand, whatever it was, he paid for it. He, and then he got all like, uh, all of the commercial rights. Then he t- and then he went back to the rest of the teams and he was like, "Okay, guys, I actually went and bought the commercial rights to Formula One. If you wanna, if you wanna jump in, if you want holy yeah, shit, you know, yeah. But I mean, he, he tried to play it off. He was like, "If you wanna jump in and 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 come in and like you know split heat, like you know do, do something else, you can buy a chunk of it from me at this exorbitant amount of money." And the teams were basically put in a position where. No, actually, with that amount of money, we, we actually need it to make the cars for next year. Yeah. So they were basically like, you know what? You keep them for now. We'll we'll figure it out later. But oh, this guy's <laughs> and a greasy. Yeah, he's slippery. worth a lot of money. Well, well yeah, he's right in now. the tens of billions now. Yeah, it, it, oh. to his name personally. Yeah. yeah. So, but Not but for F1. but but basically, like he he it, well, one quote that I think it was Eddie Irvine. He he, he basically Eddie Irvine was a, a driver from uh, Ireland. I think he he was very outspoken. He said that he what he basically did was steal Formula One rights, uh, commercial rights from under the noses of all the teams. But but I mean that that is just something that some guy says. Is not my opinion. Some people actually. Uh, he has managed to stay in power since you know since it's been about forty years yeah. since the seventies and whatever, um, because he's consistently managed to still make it appealing for the team. So he 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 has this saying Somehow. apparently yeah, he has this saying that he, he he basically goes up to you and 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 if you're Smooshes. well if if, if you're Smooshes. like a a team manager or yeah. like if you're if, if you're in a formula one and like your your team is doing well you yeah. the thing is that you go talk to bernie and if you make a convincing argument he can he, he'll tell you i'll take care of you don't worry i'll take oh. <laughs> oh. i'll take oh. care i'll take care of you <laughs> i'll take shit. care of you i'll but, take care of you but <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah. he's, he's got that, that 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 kind of a mentality um Anything that's for any controversy that's in Formula One eventually like gets and and even and even this man like he so we're talking about a committee right this F1 strategy group that's yeah. supposed to be split three ways the teams get six votes the FIA gets six votes and he gets six votes right so like yeah oh wait what <laughs> what yeah it's like i'm i get six votes <laughs> yeah. i'm the best yeah exactly oh, whatever <laughs> and so sorry 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 there's two of these guys here well yeah, yeah i put i put, okay. yeah, I put two, two guys that will probably like keep coming up and up um for the remaining of the formula one season uh jean todd uh up there he's the fia president Okay, he is um, what I would call a no good politician. Okay, <laughs> spineless bastard. <laughs> look, look at him rubbing his hands. Together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. yes, I'm going to screw them over. <laughs> <laughs> just just quickly here, uh, Forbes calls Ecclestone's net worth at 3.9 billion US dollars. Oh man. So anyway, it's a, it's a billions. Um, 
Jean Todt is the, the the president of the FIA. Obviously, well, if you, if you look into it, the uh, the role of the president of the FIA is actually a volunteer position. So you don't get it. You don't get any money. Uh, you don't. You're not part of the payroll for the FIA. But right. you're getting like kickbacks and all kinds of things left, sure. right, and center. Like Rolex yeah. is obviously gonna like send you a watch that's worth like more than a house and things like that. Like oh. there's benefits. He can he can use the oh. the FIA like the the FIA planes. The FIA is you know, it, it's it's not like he's grin. Yeah, I, he's getting he's getting paid at the end. It, it, you know, in backroom deals and stuff yeah, like that, sure. he's getting he's getting prostitutes. Paid. <laughs> prostitutes, <laughs> probably. Prostitutes. Man. Yeah. Well, so that's yeah. That that's Jean Todd. The th- thing that's interesting about Jean Todd is mm-hmm. that to, yeah, to me, like I said, he's just a he's just a politician. He before being FIA president, he, he was running Ferrari. So he actually, he actually, oh, he fuck. basically, he, okay. he, he basically graduated from being the, tre- the team principal of, uh, by and large, the biggest F1 team in terms of fan, fans and revenue and whatever. Right. Uh, straight to the top position in the FIA. He's, he probably is, w- let's be honest, he probably just does what Bernie tells him to do sure, at yeah. the end of the day. Sure, and these guys are all buddies. Oh, yeah. They're all friends. Oh, yeah. They, they've been, oh. yeah, they've been in F1 and they've been, like, cahooting since the 70s. Um, <laughs> to balance him out, I think one one person that... Like Charlie Whiting, I think, is a good guy. Yeah, Charlie okay, Whiting. The way you sort legit. of presented this, like, it makes me feel like these guys are not okay. cool. Let, this okay, guy's me, like, say, oh, I'd have a beer with let, him. Let, let, let me say one thing. Yeah. Crook... Yeah, <laughs> crook, stand up guy. Is he really? Yeah, is he stand up? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's the, oh, uh, man. He, he seems to have his, his. Even though he still gets along with with these two, uh, yeah, he he, he 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 does have a level head. It's and like a, he, it's like a Jedi amongst the room of Sith. <laughs> it's just like just know your place. He's One the, day I will rise. <laughs> oh, he's the race director, which I think is a is a job that requires a bit of compassion. Okay, he's got to be paying attention the whole race. Yeah. He gets the call when the flags get waved he gets yeah. this fl- oh flag. shit i see he flashes oh, yeah. the red lights that start the race okay if there was a thing as a, a job, as a, as a main car in and out if there was a, like such a position as like a main referee of yeah. f1 that's him oh okay yeah he, yeah, yeah. He's, he's he's the main ref of f1 he he's actually the one that like presses a button where that like shuts off the lights which means that the race can start like, stuff like that like he's like he's yeah he's right <laughs> it's like the announcer at a boxing he's fight <laughs> <laughs> he's up in that box over the checkered Flag, oh, okay. The finish okay. line. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, or observing everything, but he—he's he, actually a very down-to-earth guy, and uh, and and he, he he just just from from hearing some of his, what he has to say, in some of his interviews, he really does want the best for the sport. He loves the sport. Mm-hmm. He he he, yeah. he loves the sport, and I actually think that intrinsically, at the end of the day, and and maybe that's why these people ha- are still there and are still like. They, they still matter is because they're all at the end racers and they actually like F1. They actually, yeah. they don't, it's, it's not in their ultimate interest to, for F1 to flop. Uh, number one. And number two is just, they actually like the sport in their own twisted way. Right. <laughs> you know, what's funny about this, this little, this little trio here. Yeah. Uh, is that I feel like <laughs> these guys, kids, their kids, <laughs> if they had kids, yeah. bunch of twats. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh my, he, I don't even know them. I don't even know them. But yeah, I, he's, I he's got he's got two daughters, but don't don't let's not even get into that. Okay. And then like I'm pretty sure this guy has like Sunday barbecues like with his family. <laughs> it's just like, oh, what you guys do this for? You know, like what how's it going? You know, stand up guy. All right. Yeah. All right. Next uh, uh so th- yeah, the third component. So yeah, so this this organization, this yeah. international organization gets six votes. He gets six votes. And then the, the basically the part of the teams that replace the old coat, uh, the old FOTA, um, go one more, is this, is okay. six Formula One teams. I, I'm sorry, I made the text too small there, but basically I'm, I'm going to read it. What it says, it says, it's okay. it says a group of representatives from six strategically important teams. Five of them are permanent members right. and the other one is the highest scoring team other than the five, from the rest of the field. Oh, okay. Each, yeah, each team has one vote in these decisions. The thing right now, though, and when what we've been saying that maybe these changes won't happen until 2017 and whatever, is because up until now or up until 20, the end of 2016, any decision that the Formula One strategy group uh, gets to pass over to the F1 commission for ratification um, 
is or has to be a unanimous vote. It has to be so each. Not only do they have veto power, but each team has veto power over anything that happens. The, oh, on, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and and it's, so one thing that they've managed to do is change that, but only effective in t uh, for 2017 or 2016. Sorry, yeah. Uh, only uh, only in 2016, this is going to change, and now it's and it's going to be a simple majority, which actually makes more sense. A lot mm -hmm. more sense. Yeah. yeah. Like there was that whole thing about uh, Manor Marusha wanting to come back, right? And I think the first. The first voter that was asked was Force India, and they said, "Kind of, uh, no, we don't think so." So right there, no, uh, nobody else in the rest of those seventeen votes has to say anything because Force yeah. India already said, "We don't." Uh, so everybody says, "All right, there's, there's your answer." <laughs> so basically, one team made the decision that Manor wasn't coming back. Which I believe somehow they worked it out and they are coming back. They've paid their fee. They're coming back mm -hmm. as men. Well, they can they, they can come back if they have a if they have a car ready by. Yeah, I don't think they Barcelona. know how they're coming back yet. They sold their or, factory or already. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So anyway. so the, the the teams that are strategically important and are permanent members, you can see them there. They're the first uh, five from left to right: Scuderia, Ferrari, Ferrari, uh, Red Bull, who is actually. There, there is something out of out of this first five teams, Red Bull to me sting, sticks out because they're a relatively new team to the sport, um, and I guess Mercedes too. But anyway, Red Bull is there because they had they have been they very came successful. in and dominated yeah, for four years. They were very successful. Oh for really? A while. <laughs> Four yeah. consecutive world championships for Sebastian Vettel. Yeah, Jesus. With Red Bull, but yeah, they, they started from like a very small operation, and they built the team up to like I guess now wielding enough power to be included as the you know the permanent member. Sorry, now what? How, how do you get to be a permanent member? They decided. They, just, they they're they, like yeah. no, these they, guys, these yeah. guys, these guys. They, they sat down in a number of meetings that some people actually call the Piranha Club. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. The, Holy. Yeah. yeah. Some people call like, this like the Piranha Club. Yeah. Echo Stones. He. I think at every track he has control over the VIP areas for his catering and whatever he wants in there because oh, he's a billionaire. Yeah. And and he. <laughs> yeah, they, they, so they 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 get they get together in these meetings that apparently like go overnight and there's Schmooze all kinds and, of stuff. And yeah. Like, sure. Yeah. yeah. Hookers is flowing. Oh, the, yeah. Is, everything. Yeah. Hoverboards. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Cover so, cheese boards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they decided that <laughs> the, these these first five are basically the big teams in F1 right now. Um, anyway, so we were Red Bull Racing, McLaren Honda this year. Uh, they're Honda. Uh, Mercedes, obviously the the, the the world champions, and they are gonna. They, they, the they, giant. They, pe this to me tells me though. As, yeah, they have a huge petro petroleum sponsor. This to me tells tells me that even though the rumors have been flying that Mercedes might leave the sport after these big changes, no, I think Mercedes is there to stay. Um, Patronus, yeah, isn't that a um, uh, Harry Potter w uh, wizard spell? <laughs> I'm pretty sure something Patronus <laughs> something is. Something Patronus. Yeah, something yeah, yeah. Patronus. He turns him into like a, a piece or of something? fucking wood. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I wasn't that into Harry Potter. To Never honest. seen. The I was movies. sick for five days one uh, last year, and I watched all of them. <laughs> one day, one day I'll check them out. I haven't seen them yet. It's actually they're, quite entertaining. They're a giant oil company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this is a um, an oil company from Malaysia. Okay, yeah. is it the uh, Taipei One Hundred and One? Is their their office building? No, no, it's uh, the, the, the the Petronas Towers. The Petronas Towers. Towers. Obviously, the Petronas Towers. Ah, uh, what's it? No, whatever. <laughs> yeah, um, giant ass twin buildings. With Williams Martini Racing. That is. Um, it was a team that started sponsored by drinking and driving. Yeah, sponsored <laughs> by drinking and driving. It's a historical <laughs> partnership. They, oh my god! They just got their martini sponsorship back. Yeah. Actually. Oh really? Last yeah. year, yeah. yeah. Wait, is it like martini, like the drink, or like the brand? Well, the, yeah, the, 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 they make vermouth mostly. I think yeah, they're okay. like martini rosso. Anyway, um, so yeah, so Williams Williams actually started as a small team uh, b uh, way back though, and now they're 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 a team that has had historically uh, in the time that they've been into, into F one, you know, at the end of the seventies, early eighties, like into the nineties, they they w they had a lot of like crucial victories, and 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 they were the team uh, that Senna last race for mm. the, big, the great Senna. Frank Williams was also a really good businessman. He was uh, he started off as a mechanic. He had his own whatever started yeah. his team. Yeah. He started off like as a grease monkey, and he made some deals that worked out. 
Now his daughter runs a team. He's, yeah. He still shows up at every race. He's uh well at he's, some races. Yeah, he's in a wheelchair now. He's a really old guy. But now oh, his shit. daughter's taking over the team. Well, right. and and, and, a, and we and we go through that next. Tough team. Uh, well, actually, and, and Claire, the, Claire the last is Sahara Force India. So yeah, that that last spot is occupied by uh, basically the, the 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 team that they were the team out of the rest of the field. They were the team that scored highest last year, and that's why they get right. To and now, are these guys generally? In the highest, I'm, I'm assuming they are the highest. Some years they are, some, some years, years they are. Williams, Williams made a big yeah. comeback last year. Mc, they made a McLaren, last, for the past few years, actually, they haven't been making been like, too struggling. many news. Okay. But just because they are... Um, they, they How just, long they've been there? Historically it's, significant, right, okay. they still wield some power. Okay. Move to the next slide. And plus Honda as well. I don't know. That they were in there yeah. before Honda. Okay. But. So there we go. Now, now there here's here's the teams broken down. Oh wow, this is fantastic! <laughs> yeah, you've created like a whole little thing for me to understand uh, how the sport works. Exactly. <laughs> this yeah. is yeah. great. Well, <laughs> everyone, don't be so selfish. <laughs> ah, this is where I listen. Well, I'm a douche. Yeah. <laughs> well, but also, it, it is important to know this because as much as some, especially like me, like when I when I started watching F1, I I didn't really care or, or wanted to care that much about the politics of it. But right. you, you find that just just following F1. If if you if you if you want to be really interested in F1, this stuff is gonna come up. So you right. you may as well yeah. be aware of what's going on. Totally it reminds <laughs> me of like Game of Thrones or some yeah. shit. Oh, there you is I mean? it is a true like true to life Game of Thrones. Yeah. Then <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so clockwise, I'm gonna start with Sahara Force India. It's a team that yes, they have been successful and they have a strong driver lineup. As much as I don't like Sergio Perez. Um, <laughs> but with with Hulkenberg, they have a strong driver lineup. They are probably yeah. going to be in an, in the mix because they have an, uh, a Mercedes engine. And they managed to secure that. Um, but it's a team that some say is probably in trouble. Mm. Uh, and and yeah. the team principal they didn't show up for at Jerez <coughs> for yeah. testing. Yeah, yeah. Uh -oh. For the first testing, they're, yeah, they're the ones that didn't show up due to te like what was it like uh, performance or no efficiency issues. But really, but, the story is that yeah, they were well, they were in Mexico the week before for the unveiling of their car because <laughs> their number one driver is from Mexico, and they were while they were there they were trying to sell the seat for Jerez mm, yeah. to make money. Like basically, not even giving their two drivers who they're paying, or I guess they're not paying them, <laughs> they're paying to drive. But not even not giving their drivers a chance to test the car. They're trying to sell that seat at the first practice of the year. That's how much trouble they're in, right? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. If you want to compete, you want your drivers in the car as much yeah. as possible, obviously. Yeah, 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 totally. So the, the, the rumor is that they're in, in trouble financially. And, and that, that stems from, yeah, number one oh, over here. Can we look this guy yeah, yeah, yeah. VJ Malia. Like I VJ put over Mohawk there. Malia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's, uh, like it says over there, VJ Malia, former billionaire. <laughs> the king. <laughs> The King Fisher, 2008 hit this guy hard. Yeah, 2008 hit this guy hard. That's yeah. fucking brilliant. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, he he joined F1 in 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 you know in times when when his companies were all doing a lot better. Now now he's he's involved with a lot of scandals in India. Mm. Uh, he doesn't have his he, he he's not worth a billion dollars anymore or more. He's he's I, it's, I think I, I think he's at 750 million. I mean, still decent, but is it F1? <laughs> territory i don't know <laughs> but anyway so he, he he's, he's a controversial figure with uh lots to say he he does have i think he he does have the the, the he, he's a big player in the sport still um because of the parties he hosts and he like through right through hosting parties and stuff he's, right. he's gotten to know and i think he's gotten to to be around um a, a, a yeah. lot of the, the rest of the players mm -hmm. uh so he still wields some influence in f1 we talked about last week he's, he's famous in monaco for throwing his uh like 300 men dance floor party on his yacht yeah he's like a, oh yeah that's like right a, seven, yeah. He's a, a dance floor that's three stories tall with an opening roof on his on his boat yeah <laughs> is that Fuck. that type of baller yeah that is yes that oh, is uh, or, or used to but anyway th through that he got he got some power he's still he's still in f1 um it, people want him to stay in f1 too because you eventually you you want you want to stay true to like 
what's going on in the world and India right now is one of the big power players globally. Yeah, they got so a yeah. billion people. Yeah, you want you want India to have a presence in Formula One as much mm -hmm. as you want you want China to be to right. be in Formula One. So so it's good that they're there. Um, yeah, for sure. His his number one, <laughs> number one, <laughs> is Bob Fernley, deputy team principal. Now he's already made some headlines because of what Danny was talking about earlier. This is the dude who let it slip that. Force India didn't really want men are coming back. Oh, really? Well, but he yeah. he had his reasons, but still, like when the vote, sure, when, when this vote came to play, they basically told him like, "All right, your your vote first. Like, who? Like, do you think that they should come? Yes or no?" And just because he said no, then, but you know what it's I mean? Like, it's got to be unanimous, mm -hmm. and they don't even do a silent vote. Yeah. So. Oh shit! Just like ah, oh, you you go first. Yeah. And like, <laughs> you go first. Yeah. So as soon as some obviously as soon as somebody says no, like they because yeah. it has to be unanimous, everybody goes like, okay, well no, then then no, <laughs> then no. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next, Williams Martini Racing, yes. chaired by Claire Williams, who I still. Mm, uh, Claire Williams. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we, is there a secret crush? <clears throat> Claire, Claire well, Williams. Not, 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 it's not even secret. It's not a secret. <laughs> <laughs> it's a straight up crush. It's a tough chick. She, oh. Yeah. I, 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 I love for her to tell me exactly what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree. Please direct me, deputy team principal. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> she's. Uh, it's. It's much. Yeah, she, she's a tough chick. Uh, it's a tough check. She can. She knows. She knows how to defend herself from like the cameras and the. Just, yeah. just look. Just, just knows how to deal. Well, Real yeah. and deal. See, seeing her like in interviews, it, it can be pretty funny because she can. Okay. She can be pretty hilarious, but still like drop hints here and there. Yeah. She's cool. She. She seems to have her right. Uh, her head in the right place as to where things are going. Um, I wasn't sure at first, but yeah, she's a badass. Yeah. I think she was probably just nervous at first. <laughs> True. Oh, shit. Now I'm running a couple hundred million dollars. <laughs> team out of nowhere. Yeah. But well, she's not really out of nowhere. She's been around like since his dad. Like, her dad has been around, I guess. So yeah. her, her dad so basically started the it. team. The team yeah. is called Williams. Like, you know, that that's his daughter. Uh, it's very, very much a family affair there. So, I mean, good good for them. Good that they managed to secure that position of power there. Yeah. Her, their, vote, their vote counts, their vote matters. And she was vocal in saying that uh, she was one of the ones that voted yes for Marusha. <laughs> but that, that, that's kind of like, it's a pointless argument to, to make because... Right back to politics. Yeah, because even, the, mm -hmm. even if she had voted yes or no, it didn't matter because by that point, Bob Fernley had already voted no. So whatever her vote was didn't count. Didn't even matter. Yeah. Uh, but still, I mean, the decisions are going to be made uh, coming out of this F1 strategy commission, and she's going to be one of the power players there. Uh, and I like her to be there. She's good. Frank Williams also like they've they've they, this, this guy's is, got a nice smile. Yeah. Well, this this also is, a family man. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And this uh, this is one of the teams that is there to race. Right. They they, they they're yeah. a purebred racing team. They don't have like not I mean, selling cars and not selling soda cans. They, they, oh shit! They, they're there to yeah. If if anything, the like they 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 have this technology arm that um, uses solutions that they've learned with F one to like and they, they sell it to to things. But their projects are mostly like really benign. Really like I think wow, one of the one of the their pieces of software that they created to like take. A, take track of the telemetry yeah. uh, of the cars. Like yeah. the, these cars, when they're on track and when they're testing, they're producing huge amounts of data. And like, so whatever, of one of the pieces of software that they developed, um, they're actually using it across the UK now in hospitals to monitor the uh, the vital signs of like all their patients and stuff. And like, so you know what I mean? Like they, oh, crazy. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. but that's not their core business. Their core business is racing. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so that's cool that they're there. And so, something with that team that... I don't think a lot of big news got made out of it, but I think it gave them a big boost last year. I don't actually know all the details, but about um, them partnering with some Russian technology firm, which has helped them out with aerodynamics. Oh, yeah. I, I can't remember the name or the details. We'll, we'll talk about it another time. We'll look into it. But they, they came up and uh, destroyed a lot of competition last year out of nowhere, unexpectedly, Yeah, which is pretty great. Well, they, and they have the right engine too, so they they are definitely going to be yeah. in the mix this year in terms of uh, winning races. Uh, which brings us to Mercedes AMG Petronas mm. Formula One team. Uh, Mercedes is a relatively new entrant uh, to F one. 
Um, but they they came when when it was announced that F1 as as of last year was going to move to the new engine formula, and and the, the engines were going to be these uh, hybrids with the you know the, with the turbo <laughs> bits like bolted <laughs> the on green yeah, yeah yeah the green stuff. Yeah. Uh, but they figured, and they, as soon as that became a real thing, they got interested into F1 again. Um, they decided to come back, and they decided to come back and form. And they said, you know what, we're gonna we're gonna like work really hard in a very German fashion, very yeah. precise, very, you know, <laughs> by the book, by the very by the book to become, to, 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 to be uh, the best, to, to develop the best engine. And they did. And they did. They, they did. Shit. By, also, by far. Also the best year. accent. <laughs> also the best accent. So yeah. Total Wolf. Who, who do they have? Yeah. Right? <laughs> who are the power players Nikki here? Nicky Lauda. Yeah. Oh, look at that guy. Yeah. You know who that is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I sure do. He raced against Thor. <laughs> <laughs> Gets me every time. Yeah. yeah, Nicky Lauda is there. He's a non-executive chairman, but uh, rumors are are that he's yeah, actually he going to be. Yeah, he, he's going to be an executive chairman uh, beginning this year. Um, he talks on camera a lot for the team. Yeah, uh, okay. He, he's, he's, he's a lot of PR for them. He's okay. good PR, and he's also like he's, he's he calls it like he sees it. And, okay, and that's one thing I think that actually they, they both share in common. They're they're kind of they're they're two no nonsense guys. Uh, mm. And and Toto actually he's he's a racer. Like he used to race like he uh, single seaters and DTM I think at one point. Um, but then he's also a businessman and just his knowledge and his his love for the sport got him that position that he's at. He's he's, he's the, where he's one of the big power players at Mercedes. And Mercedes trust him and clearly they've made a right decision because he's still there. And uh, I I like them both to be there yeah. because they don't they're not playing politics. You know what I mean? Like even, even, yeah, they're not. Even when their game is, uh, even when their primary well, active is like, you know, let's make some profit and the moment that... They're fucking destroying everybody so they don't need to play any politics. Yeah. But, <laughs> well, I, maybe inter-team though. Toto Wolf was yeah. really good last year, which with something that I'm sure is going to be a big problem again this what? year. What is that? Hamilton and <laughs> Rosberg keeping their drivers in like, fighting uh, <laughs> these two guys these two guys they're two drivers Hamilton oh right they, they just got um, that guy right we talked about it uh, two, two podcasts ago and they signed him they're, th- oh, they're, they're they, trying they, to re-sign they, Hamilton before the next season oh okay, I see so the thing okay. is they're, they're two drivers basically grew up in it together all right, the way from karting from when they're like 13 12 years old no they're, they've been buddies yeah well they, they got into uh, they weren't talking for a few oh, periods of friendship they're, breakup. They're, 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 Uh-oh. They're, they're two undereducated guys. Actually, I wouldn't say that about Nico. I wouldn't say it yeah. for either of them, really. Actually, yeah, really. But I mean, Seems uh, they have to be Nico Rosberg speaks, like, I think, five languages. Yeah. Oh, no, that's... He's, uh, he's I, not barely, a, I barely speak like one. Completely <laughs> fluently. He's a German, Italian, Spanish, English. Oh, that sure. doesn't count. It's else. all from the same continent. <laughs> speaks them all. I'm just kidding. No, but... These two guys are fighting a lot, and it was... Total Wolf, who had to fucking step between them all the time yeah. <laughs> when they weren't talking. Yeah. Hamilton was more like, oh, we're still friends. And Rosberg was like, I don't know. I don't know. He beat me last weekend. How am I supposed <laughs> to? <laughs> so, I th- yeah, I, I like them too, though. And yeah, yeah keeping, keeping the inter-team tri- rivalry, like they, they've managed to do that. And they've managed to, to do that like in a pretty matter-of-factly uh, situa- at, at least from their interviews, you can tell they're very like, you know, we sat them down. We told them, listen, grow up. Yeah, then, yeah, yeah. listen, grow the fuck up. All right. Yeah, well, they're adults. At the same time, though, I got the German background. Love these guys. Loud as a legend. I love Hamilton. He's yeah. a two time champion now. Yeah. But it's hard to cheer for them because there's no competition. Yeah, mm. exactly. Like, Which- whatever. It's hard to be. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. It's hard. As as far as just being otherwise, yeah, I, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like him, but I don't. <laughs> let me tell you somebody that I don't like intrinsically is uh, is is this guy, it's the group CEO of McLaren, Ron Dennis. Ron Dennis. Ron Dennis is mm. <laughs> was a pretty big. I don't trust his hairline. Yeah, exactly. Mm. <laughs> Feels like it absorbs too much sunlight. <laughs> Another one of these weasley Fuels guys. Fuels his hatred. Yeah, yeah he's, he's he's a bit of a weasley guy. He's, okay. He's 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 pretty. But he he brought um a culture of like very uh um like met- millimetrical success to to. Uh, uh, to uh, McLaren, it's like, so, like winning on stipulation. No, no, just 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 being very precise and and, and 
the 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 rumor is is that if you work for McLaren, whenever you like, if you're at your desk yeah. at work, and Ron Dennis enters like the room, like you like you have like you get all paranoid because like your all your pencils and like your pens have to be like a specific way all lined up. Oh, and there there okay. can be no clutter. They can, so he's, <laughs> he's 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 a massive like. You know, he, he's he's got that OCD complex, and he and he expanded that through his his entire operation at McLaren, um, and he was backed up by the amount of success that he had um, with uh, with Senna. When when Senna won his championships, he did it on a McLaren car, and Ron Dennis was like was just starting, I think, back then uh, to be to, to to run McLaren as a wear. And since then, he's he's had you know he 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 had another victory with Lewis Hamilton yeah. when he brought Lewis Hamilton into the sport, yeah. uh, and basically nursed him from when he was so it, when he was a little kid. So a lot of people look up to Ron Dennis because he 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 was able to turn McLaren around and 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 make McLaren. Uh, I think. In terms of percentages of mm-hmm. the amount of races that they've taken part in, um, versus how, like how many of those races they've won, right. they have the highest percentage of wins. Okay. Of like so that's that's one of their stats, and 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 they owe a lot of that to to Ron. But if you look if you look at uh, if you watch some interviews of him, he has <laughs> what some people have actually called Ron speak. <laughs> where he, where you ask, where he, you ask him a question, and he kind of, he kind of tries to answer, but he uses like his answers are so verbose, so like he just he, he talks about like too much like technical stuff that you don't know if he actually answered the question or yeah. like you're not you're not kind of you know better what he said yeah you know you know better off yeah <laughs> <laughs> and and he's he's sneaky like that just mm. so just 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 look at him talk like sometimes like I you know when, when I when I'm listening to some of his interviews I'm like okay just just Wait. talk like a normal person yeah. like, Ron like <laughs> come on Ron yeah tell me the truth come on <laughs> so yeah you can never know like what's in his mind or what his what his what his plans are what he's what he's meddling with um so that's it <laughs> that alone is the reason why we're gonna be paying a lot of attention to what his moves are this year the one right. thing i wonder about this guy is you be uh, going on what you just said about him mm-hmm. you look at that i don't know when that picture's from but he looks like he's really skinny <laughs> right and if you look at say uh hamilton worked for him yeah started off really skinny he started <laughs> if you look he's one of the bigger guys yeah we were talking actually talking about this before <laughs> before the show about if you dropped all every driver into the ufc cage who would exit <laughs> okay but you look so you look at hamilton he became one of the more athletic drivers you look mm-hmm. at button he button is, is the he is the most athletic driver he's yeah, he rides in uh marathons well, he does triathlons, triathlons and and oh shit that's yeah. crazy he does that kind of training where you got like the oxygen tube in your mouth and you're just holy pumping away. fuck that's scary and, yeah and like you wonder if that athlete. comes from him and then if you look at at the same time uh, alonso he's one of the more athletic guys as well yeah maybe not as hardcore as you would think button, but you can like, tell he goes to the People who no, play keeps. professional StarCraft are like on like these strict physical regiments, <laughs> body, mind, soul, like training. <laughs> right. You would think people who drive things like hundreds of kilometers an hour would have the like they would be training physically every day. Some of them are. Yeah, some a of, lot some of them are. A just, lot of them are, but like shouldn't it have been like all of them? Well, I mean, yeah, but it, 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 it <laughs> but that that's, that separates the fucking strong from the weak. Exactly, yeah, exactly. and 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 that's it, a lot of the times that's, that's like your 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 management philosophy, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you're if you're a team manager and if you if you don't think that fitness is all the all like all that high up there, right? Then you probably wouldn't pay for you know the gym hours and the, the physio and whatever they need to have. To, like, right. I don't think they're worried about the the money, but the time going to there. Uh, I just, I just maybe, wonder. Yeah, that makes sense. I just wonder with those three guys specific. Specifically, if it has anything to do with him, with him. But if you look at him, he's uh, skinny, right? He's he's yeah. obviously not going to the gym. Oh, he he likes his pen straight, maybe, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So it's him again. So so we have we we have a, a a snake here in Ron Dennis, and and I think balanced quite well by these two, Eric Bouillet, Bouillet, Bouillet. I don't know how. Bouillet, Bouillet. Bouillet? Bouillet? I think it's Bouillet. 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 Anyway. <laughs> He's, he's Booyah. friend. Booyah. Eric Booyah. Booyah. <laughs> Booyah. And I got to get this right again. Yasuhisha Arai. Um, 
we're, so the, uh, Eric Bouye is uh, the racing director of McLaren. The one who speaks English? It, it, uh, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> Yasushita yeah, is the racing director that speaks Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> He's, <laughs> Eric Bouye is the racing director and Yasuhisha is uh, the Honda Motorsport chief. Okay. Like, so so he, was, he was very instrumental um, in bringing Honda back into F1. Okay. Um, so this year, this Arai guy, and and Eric Bouye, he got basically s stolen from Team Lotus, and he got brought to McLaren after McLaren had a big management crisis. Right. They sacked Martin Whitmarsh, um, yeah. and uh, and and brought this guy because he was he was able Eric Bouye was able to turn around at uh, another team, Team Lotus, and and make it you know pretty successful for a while. Lotus was doing very well when the aero rules and blown yeah. diffusers were working for them. Prior to 2014, they were like they they, they were occupying that that fifth that basically that sixth spot, best of the rest. They were. Uh I think the only team that was blowing their exhaust forward, weren't they? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, back yeah. in the blown diffusers thing. But, <laughs> but anyway, he... Fucking badass. And, and their car sounded ridiculous. You can find... We don't have to look it up here, but... Look up uh, audio of that Lotus. The, the, the Lotus was 2013? I believe it was 2013. The, the 2013 it might have been 2012. 2012, yeah, I guess so. No, no, yeah, yeah 20, 2012 13, spec. Their blown diffusers were gone by yeah. 2012. I, I, I like Air because despite... Being a French guy, <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't seem to want to play the politics games that much. Like when when you when you listen to his his interviews, like he's actually pretty. Uh, what seems like to, he's also he, very straightforward. Yeah, yeah, he comes across as being pretty straightforward, pretty honest. And yeah, so he's right. Like he's he, you, you can tell that um, th that his dedication to this F one project is full one hundred percent, and mm -hmm. and he has the backing of Honda. Uh, and and they have he's the one that admitted that they made a mistake by leaving F one. Yeah, they want to. They say they're committed for for till the end of time. Yeah. Oh my to, god. To be in F one until yeah. the gravity. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> until the gravity. <laughs> <has it. laughs> So yeah. I, I, I think that those two are going to be a great counterbalance to Ron Dennis's sneakiness, um, <laughs> <laughs> and and they're obviously going to Yasuhisha Rai from Honda. Um, wielding a lot of influence uh eric Bouillet yeah. from the, the team and then uh ron dennis from you know the mclaren being mclaren ceo so he, he's gonna be another big power player uh next up we got red bull red bull rbr uh, so with red bull we have um right at the top <laughs> dietrich mateschitz yeah. he is the owner of red bull uh He's a, he's a figure that's mostly in the shadows. Yeah. Well, he's uh, the businessman. He's the one that turned Red Bull into a multi-billion dollar business. That's right, yeah. yeah. He made that dude, I believe, the richest man in Thailand who invented Red Bull. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think he is, he is a, the, the, the richest man in Thailand. I believe he is. Oh, I think he, he actually might have died now. The guy, the inventor, the Red Bull inventor. Oh, yeah? I think he might have died. He invented that stuff, I think, back in the late 60s, though. Well, yeah. I'd Sold it for decades until he met this guy. Yeah. Now he's a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> All they had to do was add carbonation. Have you ever had one of those, like, the little Red Bulls? They sell them at some convenience stores here. No. You can, you can get, like, you can basically... What is it, like, those five-hour power types? Yeah, things? they were basically, like, the original five-hour power shots. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was what Red Bull was, and that's that's how Red Bull, like, how, that's how Those Dietrich Mateschitz founded. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. When when it was uh, the deal was that the, he used to take these trips to Thailand because uh, he was like a salesman of something or other, and every time that he was in Thailand, he like saw this thing like, oh shit, like it, it really works. Oh, <laughs> I bet I can sell this in Europe. Yeah, he was, well that dude yeah. was making money off them for years in Thailand, selling them to truck drivers and construction workers and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, I guess he added the carbonation, designed the drink can, and. Put some put some good looking girls and little minis going around. <laughs> I guess then started sponsoring every extreme sport known to man. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like Red Bull gives you wings. I I like Red Bull no, does I, not I, actually I, give you wings. Yeah, not and and especially not if you're uh, uh, what is it Daniel Daniel Kvyat on, on third day of testing. What happened to him? It, remember he broke it, the, the 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 front wing. And right. Red, Bull, Red Bull didn't have any didn't spare have front wings. So that, that is yeah. one documented occurrence when Red Bull indeed does not they give you wings. 
<laughs> we're not ready with those wings. No, no. Yeah, this dude is the ultimate businessman, apparently. Yeah, yeah he's a, he's a pretty good businessman, and I, 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 you know what? I like what he's doing with his billions. He's I don't think he he has like a um uh, any any kind of family inclinations or anything like that. He's just yeah. with my billions. I'm gonna start sponsoring extreme sports because I like extreme extreme sports, and you know all all the good for him. They he managed to well he managed to get a team that turned Red Bull around and turned Red Bull into a force yeah, to I mean, be reckoned with. They sponsor that in Quebec. They do that Crash Dice event. They, oh, that stuff is sweet. Yeah, they sponsor the wingsuit dudes, the, those Dreamline videos on YouTube, the Red Bull Stratos space jump where Felix Baumgartner jumped from space. Somebody from Google broke his record. <laughs> sort of off the record. That wasn't really in the news. Yeah. Everything, man. Yeah. So no. much. Did, do you think... One thing I don't know, did the original Red Bull have that flavor? The the kind of yellow pineapple-y flavor? I think it does <laughs> in a very concentrated way. My, my old buddy Mike, I loved his description, is pretty apt to me. Metallic strawberries. <laughs> Metallic <laughs> Red Bull. He's like, well, the, the more the smell than the taste, I'd say. Yeah. But he's like, yeah, fucking Red Bull smells like metallic strawberries. <laughs> that is pretty, fairly accurate. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not sure. I think it did. I think it did. I haven't. I haven't. I haven't actually tried one of those little Red Bulls, but I know that yeah, they exist, and I know they sell them here. Back in time to Thailand <laughs> to find out. Um, Somebody let us know if you know. Yeah, if, if, yeah. the original recipe. <laughs> uh, who, who, uh, Christian Horner is also uh, a guy that we're going to be hearing over and over uh, from Red Bull. He's. I don't know. How, how do you describe uh, Christian Horner, Danny? I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know what he, what his intentions are. I don't know. They, wasn't he like an underwear model at some point? Like everyone tries to get him to sign that photo of him. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> like, he's, like, he's like half naked, sitting on a racing car from some old magazine ad. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that's because he I don't was, know where he came from. To be honest, he was. Oh, he, I think he was a, a team principal or some sort of an executive oh, um, thanks, of um, yeah. of a team that used to race um, in lower categories. And that's that's where that picture comes from. But now, okay, okay. now, now he he races. Well, he doesn't race, but he he's uh, the team principal of Red Bull, right. uh, largely responsible for many of their wins or for for assembling a team at least mm. that um, uh, that got him four world championships. I and guess he was like Vettel's advocate. Yeah, coming up, uh, him and Helmut Marko. Um, yeah. But anyway, yeah. So he he's he's gonna make a splash this year, one way or another. I mean, just he's likable. But I find that since Red Bull started losing last year, um, his his reaction to some of the questions of the press have been more like yeah, you know, like m mm -hmm. more double phase. Is. Like, and he, he he seems like maybe it's he's a little started, bit bitter. Maybe yeah. Well, m maybe he started as a as a guy that didn't play the politics game, but. You know the the rest of these dudes broke him, and now he's he's one of them. He's one of them. He's one of <laughs> us. Them. Uh, Adrian Newey, um, genius, aerodynamicist <laughs> extraordinaire. Uh, the yeah. brains behind the X twenty fourteen we just looked at. Oh, yeah, that okay. crazy car with the cockpit. Twenty XX. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's he's uh, he's he's he's. By and large, the the best or recognized as the best aerodynamicist yeah. in F one. Um, I think altogether in the many teams that he's been, he's won what like two, like over twenty championships. Like his cars have won. So um, he's yeah. he's being very vocal now for what you said. Yeah, as of yesterday. Well, we just talked about this earlier about the twenty sixteen to twenty seventeen rules are not happening, and he'd already expressed that he's probably going to be leaving the sport to go do something else that lets his mind work more. Cause he's an old stu school dude that he still designs with uh, like an easel and a protractor oh, and crazy. a compass and a ruler. Yeah. And he, he, yeah, no AutoCAD. Well, I'm sure he knows AutoCAD, but he draws by, he designs by hand. God damn. And uh, yeah, his, his basically his uh, complaint is that F1 has become too engine based, especially in the last two or three years. Yeah, but that's... And that especially since last year, I keep saying it. The thing I don't agree with was that the cars were ugly last year. Mm -hmm. To me, those aesthetics don't matter so much. But to him, it did a little bit. But uh, people were pissed off about the like cock noses on the car, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's this quote from yesterday that F1's lost its focus. There's no more emphasis really on aerodynamics 
or really the driver because of all the computer power. His quote is, you can always improve, but the problem is the limitation of the regulations, so much so that the car is designed for you. Like we told uh, you, okay. like the nose is this year because people were upset about the cock or whatever they wanted to call the thing that last year. They have three spots where you have to meet a certain volume and surface area shape, which homologizes them a lot. They look, they look similar. Right. They should it, all look completely di- like they should all yeah. look like they came one from Mars and one from Jupiter. Right, whatever, right. Right. Okay. So can we go back and who which is who why decides? He's who, who is there a final say on who decides how a car is going to look? Um, well, it, in, in a certain way, how cars look uh, are by and large um, Based restricted on, on the rules. Right. And and this yeah. committee, the, the, this F1 strategy group, they're in charge now of putting forth new rules or changes to the rules. Right. So that's why it's important. So, yes, if uh, the answer to your question would be them. them. They they would. Them. <clears throat> but throughout this conversation, I'm, I've sort of been gathering that it's more or less not these guys but the other two parties as that well, are involved. exactly. Well, more so than these guys. Well, they, they just hold more votes. Each one of these teams gets only one vote. One vote each, right? Ugh. So, and as soon as one says no to something, then vetoed. <laughs> and then things Ugh. that things that yeah, you, these meetings must be boring as hell. Bullshit. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure that they must be talking to each other at some point, right? Well, they they, they're talking to each other all the time, all the time. Yeah. And, and like in like that, you know that's what, dark that's what, okay. corners yeah, and whatever. Yeah, sure. But that's what makes me like uh, when you guys are talking about uh, Force India uh, about, about their thing, and they were the first ones to vote. Yeah, the other teams would have known that oh, that's yeah. what they were oh, going to yeah. do. Yeah. Right? Oh, for sure. Well, maybe not. I don't, I don't know. And some sort of backroom dealing. Because these like guys are the the lowest of the top no, six okay. teams. Listen, they're like Manor possibly could. Offer some competition at Force India, right? It makes it more mm-hmm. difficult for them to score points mm-hmm. and win prize money for next year. I don't know. But at the same time, the reason that Force India and all the other teams had to spend crazy money redesigning the cars is because of safety. And Manor wanted to come back with last year's car, which was this deemed not safe enough, which is why they changed the mm-hmm. noses this year and made them have to absorb more G forces. Yeah, it gets really deep. <laughs> and then you go from, if you go back two years ago before the cock noses, the thing that all the aerodynamicists wanted to keep, but which was deemed dangerous because of, which was a Grosjean almost killed Fernando Alonso. Oh, yeah. I believe it was at, um, at Monza. Was that Monza? Uh, no, uh, Belgium. Belgium, Belgium. The first corner is a hairpin. Mm-hmm. And uh, so as Fer- Alonso was on the outside, slowed down and turned. This Grosjean guy basically this didn't slow down enough and went straight over his cockpit. Oh. So up, at, up until that year, the noses, if you're calling this the floor, the noses were about this high, like almost as high as the driver's heads. So for oh, the next wow. year, they dropped them right down and they narrowed them. But that was just for noses. that. W- was that in as, response as to as that? If you ask Adrian Newey, it was in response to that because Alonso almost got killed. Okay, so, so if you ask Adrian Newey where he'd want the nose, it's as high as possible. Like, as long as you're not blocking the driver's vision, that's how high you want the nose because you want the air going under the car. Right, right. To, totally to be right. able to, like, no, no, no that use I understand. The air. Okay, but okay, so uh, uh, um, a rule was uh, added to hockey not too long ago, maybe okay. about a year or so ago, and it had to do with um, icing. Okay. So there's a new icing rule. <sighs> like that. So the idea is that if one team has yeah, the puck in, in the end and they, they throw it over, um, it's not an instant icing, but like if there if there's a race to, mm-hmm. to, to get that icing, whoever's in the lead gets um, uh, gets it. So if if the player who needs to get it to, to call the icing comes up, mm. then uh, then it's called an icing. To avoid the fact that people were just smashing they were into just each other, full speed and smashing full each other speed. at the boards, right? So in like right. people were getting fucked up yeah. big time from this. And as a response, yeah, this like a new rule. Yeah, like a guy skating like 35 kilometers Exactly. So in hour. response to this, because like there was actual, like lots of damage happening to the players right. because of this thing. And now they added um, this new rule for the refs to be like, they can call it. They'd be like, nope, uh, this guy's got it or this team's got it. Okay. Um, but that seems like a very rational thing to do in that moment where it's like, no, no, this is clearly a problem, but... Like that instance you just, Danny just talked about, seems like a once in a sort of 
Like, had that incident not come up that season, do you think the rules would have changed? No, not not in that regard. People yeah. would have been like, yeah, if 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 nothing like that happened, then we still probably have those high noses. That right. we, I think that those high noses, the high noses look badass. <laughs> I'd like yeah, to see I them did. back. I did, and it worked better. Yeah, it worked better. Yeah. The cars were were better. I'm gonna show you this quick, Mike. We can't really show this on video, but you right. can. This is the about 20 seconds. This is the incident that we just talked about. So Alonso, this is right at the beginning. This, this is yeah, right at the start of the race, the first corner. Yeah, we're talking about. So Alonso's driving this Ferrari. Oh, you, yeah, I've seen this. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, we showed we showed Mike yeah, this yeah, before. Yeah, I've seen that before. That's yeah. crazy. But this is the incident that dropped the noses because yeah, he almost okay. got his face taken off there, right? So it's 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 always a a, a thing that right. okay. So the the the, F, the FIA or you know. Uh, that, uh, wh- it seems whoever, like such a weird. But but he, here's the thing, right? Like right. It, in the politics of it, uh, uh, the way that they stand are, or at that point where that um, that happened, uh, and because that happened, and because it was dangerous, and it could have like basically taken Alonso's head off, um, then they were put in a position where they had to make these rules. Literally half a meter back, it would have took yeah. his face right off. Yeah, but Jeez. but they were in a position where they had to make these rules to like hopefully prevent anything like anything bad from you know something bad didn't happen there. But right. what if it had? What so if it had? so so right, they, right. They, they had to. No, make these I'm, rules. I'm not. I'm not. Well, but saying the, it's bad the thing call. is that they make these rules, and then when it came down to the teams to interpret the rules last year, right. they came up with those like dildo noses of the cars and <laughs> and things like that. That and then Basically. what what happened is that then those posed their own set of problems because what if what happened is that they, in, instead of instead of protecting the cars, those noses, what could have potentially have done is being so sharp and so low down Punctured that they, the yeah, they could have either punctured the side or like into flipped the, a car over. Into their survival. Yeah, therefore generating another problem altogether that they hadn't thought about. So that's, that is a problem with trying to legislate Mm-hmm. Something without without knowing exactly how it would turn out, and right. you and you can right. I guess in, in a certain way you can't know um, how a specific set of rules is going to get interpreted by all the teams. Right. But then the problem that you that you face is that okay, well, do I overregulate then? Do I make it so that we cover all the bases? But then by covering all the bases, or by covering all the pos- the possible different outcomes and different scenarios, then you're just making like. So many that, rules that, that constrict. Printed, that's like yeah. 400 pages. Then you're making so many rules that constrict people like Adrian Newey, for example, to, to, to generate like beautiful cars that will work well or, 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 or people with the engines, whatever mm-hmm. it might be. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. In, um, even that problem that you just mentioned even has been addressed. Like we're gonna, not going to have enough time today. To, we want to cover all the rules that are coming up this, this season, but one big one as far as safety goes with those nose problems puncturing the side is that the I think it's what they use as Kevlar on the inside as a puncture-proof material. Mm-hmm. Before it was up to about the driver's waist. Now it comes right up to their head uh, okay. because of that problem. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Into the uh, survival cell, the sides of it. Anyway, I, w- I want I want to finish <laughs> yeah, <it's good. laughs> uh, this. Uh, keep going with the power players of Get F1. Out of here. And yes, we have we have uh, uh, arrived. <laughs> At, uh, <laughs> we've at, arrived. We've arrived at, uh, at, 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 at the one team that uh, has always, always, always been in Formula One. <laughs> and and, and that, that guy seems like a nice guy. Formula he Uno. Seems like a nice yeah, guy. Formula Uno. Uh, he, yeah, exactly. So yeah, Ferrari, huge power player. And no All matter right. what, even if they're winning or not, they're there. They're there, and because they're the oldest team in F1, they are the one, the team that has the most fans around the world. Um, and actually, if you look at Latifosi, yeah, if you look at if you look at the rest of the teams, mm-hmm. um, even even from for- Force India, which uh, races for India, um, uh, Mercedes races for Germany, um, and uh, Red Bull, for example, races for Austria. Even though they the, the, they race like the you know the, the, their affiliation is a specific country, right. those other teams are all based in Britain. Because, oh really? Yeah, they're they're, they're based there. Their factory and whatever is all Milton uh, Keynes. Yeah, yeah, in, in and around like Motorsport Valley, they call it because so many yeah. F one teams are based out of there. Um, the only one of, out of these big power players that's not based in England is Ferrari, oh, obviously. Shit. And 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 they 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 they're a big mark, obviously. Like you've, I'm sure that as soon as you heard about cars for the first time of your life, like you shortly after everyone you knows what yeah, Ferrari, Ferrari is. You know, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the yeah. Ferraris. Uh, you know, the, the idea that people 
half of, of uh, um, sports cars, uh, you know, a sports car is red. It comes from Ferrari because yeah. they, they were racing for Italy, and Italy is a racing. Uh, Italy's racing color is red. Anyway, Even, but especially when you're a kid, when you you see any supercar, you're like, oh my god, a Ferrari! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They, they, they are no name and and, and rightfully so yeah. and because of that they get they get kind of they get to get special treatment in F1 right. obviously right. Uh, at, before the prize money gets parsed out and whatever they get a cut that they get they get a chunk of money that no other team gets just for participating in Formula One like kind of Bernie saying thank you for being here here's like 200 million dollars or something like that <laughs> but, uh, and oh my god and because and, and but also <laughs> because of that they, they also hold a lot of power uh, and in and, and the, and the decision making mm. um, and now these two players that we have here you know uh, the, the rest of the board here that uh, that I put together a lot of them uh, you know a couple a couple are new faces a couple are like sort of new you know yeah, yeah. Arai he's he's new from Honda but these two guys the team that is managing Ferrari now essentially is brand new mm. um, before yeah. like you know even as recently as last year it was uh, like the, the main players were two different ones. These these two are brand new. Um, and let me start with Sergio Marchione, Italian Canadian. Oh, yeah, he's uh, he, mm -hmm. yeah he went to UFT and then he got his uh, his law degree and MBA from University of Windsor. Um, he's uh, he was he was basically he was born in Italy but raised in Canada. Um, you can tell by his expression there exactly like he said he's yeah, yeah he's 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 pretty much a, a good guy but he's also a no nonsense businessman right. uh, that has uh, he was tasked with the almost seemingly impossible task to um, bring Fiat back in the, so so right. the, the, he he came to life because he brought Fiat back into profit he turned it into like. He basically turned into Italy's biggest, um, like b biggest business, biggest powerhouse of, mm -hmm. uh, of industrial right. uh, output. Um, he he then went ahead and he was instrumental in Fiat acquiring Chrysler. Mm -hmm. And now Fiat and Chrysler are like basically the same company. Uh, he's the CEO for both. Um, he, he, then, then what he did with Fiat, he did again with Chrysler. Now Chrysler is is back into like making money. Mm -hmm. Like he's uh, he, he, well, well, one of his quotes is like, he, for example, like when when they interviewed him, he's like, he said, he, you know how they have like the Detroit three or Detroit four car companies, right? He said, he's yeah. like, he, he said something like, we might be this the smallest one of the three in Detroit, but we're not the dumbest. Like he's, right. but, yeah, but yeah, he's, yeah. He's, 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 oh, well said. Yeah, yeah you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like he's, and, and he's managed to actually like make some money. He repaid the debts to the Canadian and American government um, under Chrysler. So he's, he's got an impeccable track record, but he's, he's also like one of those guys that is known as being like, a workaholic apparently like dur yeah. during that time he would only sleep you can't see it on his face but yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah really yeah. he looks young and happy but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i got some stress um, probably good buddies with lance stroll's dad too pro yeah probably yeah anyway he's he's so he, he uh, w w one of the things that always makes me laugh is that apparently when he got uh when when, when he went to italy mm -hmm. uh to take to, to manage fiat he was shocked and appalled because the other managers and his and the people that he wanted to communicate would only communicate amongst each other via their secretary. They'd send like little memos to each other, whereas he like would be like, "No, I I want to talk to you." Like, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what, set up a meeting. Yeah, no, no, we can do this now. Yeah, exactly. What's wrong and with you? <laughs> you can you can even tell, but but and, and this is pretty much what he looks like all the time. He's always wearing like a pullover sweater on top. Yeah. Like, he, he he shuns like full full suits. Like, is right. Like, so he's he, he's always on the go, and he's he's got a good attitude. And um, even though uh, what he's trying to do right now, and some might say that may, that it may not happen, it may or or it may just be a publicity stunt, but. Um, right now, what uh, the the Fiat Chrysler Group is trying to do is spin off Ferrari mm. um, and sell it off um, in the New York Stock Exchange or something. Um, but before Ferrari, before he can do anything significant with that, um, he's got to bring Ferrari back to like back to glory. back to good standing, back to glory, right? right? Because right. Ferrari won't. In, in his mind, he he thinks that for Ferrari to 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 to, to be 
the team that it, that it or the company that it is, like mm -hmm. it needs to be winning races. Ferrari needs to win and sure. selling cars. In the last and, the and last few months, didn't they release now three road cars? Yeah, you know, <laughs> the FXX here. I'm not sure if that's street legal. No, that's only for that's a track car, but yeah. people will. Buy. They, they, Some, a handful of people will. Three new models, at least, anyway. In the, yeah. last, in the last few months alone, and he's Canadian, and you can, you can tell that you you can, you can see some of his Canadian no not no nonsense attitude, uh, in, in just when when he gets interviewed in English, he's he he's hilarious to watch, like because he he'll like he'll he'll tell it how it is, yeah, right, and and he clearly he has one objective, he's focused, he's got one objective in his mind, and is bringing Ferrari back to winning races, right. Uh, from a very high level, so what? So yeah. anything that he can do to do to, to make that happen, he has done. He's he's sacked management. He's sacked people. He's brought new people in. He's he's eliminated a culture of uh, some people say like a culture of of waste of that was disguised as you know Italian traditions. Mm. But no, he's, he's so he's streamlined Ferrari, and he's to me it. The results that Ferrari had this testing season, this testing yeah, so far. Who know, yeah. Again, it's so hard to tell with the other it's, teams who's sandbagging and stuff. But if Ferrari and, and looks Reikonen, in good shape, Raikkonen basically shit the bed last year. But if him and Vettel can bring it to Mercedes, I'm gonna be happy. Yeah, like Alonso did two years ago. Went down to the last race. And there's no double points this year. Yeah, it went right down to Brazil two years ago. Yeah, the Alonso fight. It went back and forth. He almost won that race. Even mm -hmm. they're close. Yeah. So they could, they could taste it for sure. And, and, and the fact that they've been, that they were able to do this in like basically from, from last year's car to this year is a complete change that some teams may not have been able to do like such a radical change, such a, ra like such, such a sharp radical increase in performance from one year to the next. And even now, I think uh, Renault is maybe having some doubts. They said something the other day about. Now they're considering maybe saving some of their tokens towards the end of the season, <laughs> yeah. so they they can um, have a combinatory effect, I guess, into yeah. next year, and yeah. bring more of a jump next year. Because I guess they've more or less given up. I don't know. Yeah. So Sergio Marchione, uh, Honda's the big uh, good on him. Good, 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 good Canadian boy, Canadian Italian or whatever. Um, but yeah, he's um, he, he's he's doing some good things. I think I think he. He does intrinsically as well want the best for the sport, mm -hmm. and but to him the best for the sport is also bringing Ferrari back to winning, right. which Obviously. I mean <laughs> I'm not opposed to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and and as part of his grand plan, he has brought this man here, Maurizio Arriva, Arriva Bene. Bene. Now Arriva Bene, like he, whereas he's been uh, whereas Marchione has been operating more from like the, the very top level, like just you know. I'll do what I can, but what I can do is, you know, change people, you know, and change the management. So he 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 brought him, and he. Arriva mm -hmm. Ben is kind of a good name for racing. <laughs> yeah, he arrives well. Translate. <laughs> <laughs> Your car arrives well. Um, Arriva Ben, he comes. He, he he's he's been associated with Ferrari for a long time. Um, way back to Ferrari's big big sponsorship uh, by Mal uh, Marlboro. Right. Uh, he's he used to work uh, for Philip Morris, you know the the, the tobacco company, mm -hmm. and <laughs> he was there for a long time, and he was instrumental in bringing um, the, the the big Marlboro sponsorship to Ferrari. And since then, uh, he's been involved with Ferrari. Actually, to this to this day, uh, most of the advertisement that space on a Ferrari car actually belongs to Marlboro, but because because of the laws, yeah, yeah because cigarettes of the laws, they cannot, uh, yeah, they they cannot advertise for cigarettes. Then Marlboro, part, then they farm the, that space over to other companies. So whoever wants to advertise on a Ferrari, they go, th they pay Marlboro, uh, and then they they can put their stickers oh on the car. God. Yeah, but anyway, but for, this for goes. Sorry, for anyone that's into uh, last week tonight, John Oliver, excellent segment on cigarettes and Philip Morris this week. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Nothing to do with F1, but <laughs> similarly related. Nice. Anyway, yeah, but he, uh, very uh, like uh, like Ted Kravitz, uh, Kravitz said, very dapper looking guy. He always <laughs> seems to yeah. like be very, very, very sharp, very He's sharp looking. got a few looking. buttons undone there. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> is he, 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 he looks like he, I guess that's an Italian thing. Yeah, so yeah he, but he—he's a good-looking guy. You know what I mean? Like he's—he's a, he's a, he's a guy, and and 
to paraphrase something that I think uh, Peter Windsor say said, I think uh, it was him. The more that I hear coming from Arriba Bene, the more I like him. Like, cause he's mm. he's he's been the one that says he, he he's the one that said let's bring let's bring F1 closer to the fans. You know, instead of yeah. holding the press conferences in a closed room, like in the at the track or whatever on the Thursday. I like that. I hope yeah. they implement this. Let, let's put him let's put him out there in some forum in, in the local city where where people can come and actually see the uh, the drivers getting yeah, interviewed. Yeah, dude, downtown like it's, Montreal. The tracks in the city. Yeah, that's where we're going, but. Yeah, why not have it downtown? Have it in a yeah. big conference center where you can have. Wait, it, wait, it, can, it can be public attendance, and anybody can come and see uh, and see the races, and and just bringing. You know, he, he's all for a couple of things. He's all for bringing the sports, the sport closer to the fans, mm. and he's even he's even uh, being playing with the idea of of making streaming more available. He's talked about that. Yeah, everybody's into that. Yeah. Again, no, not everybody, man. Not 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 Eccleston. Eccleston well, not couldn't Bernie get, Eccleston. Yeah, couldn't get Everybody fuck. except fucking Bernie Ecclestone. Yeah. He's dumbass. But again, <laughs> again, UFC, I'm into fighting. This is what they're doing now. Their, U, their YouTube channel, they hold the press conference the day before with the weigh-ins and the post-fight conference is in a... Usually, at the, a lot of them are in Vegas in the MGM Grand. So they have 10, 15,000 people show up. They do it in, in the same stadium where they're holding the event. They have the athletes come out and talk. It's streamed for free live on YouTube, oh, which gets Jesus. hundreds of thousands of views. Of course. I've watched, I've watched maybe a handful of, of course. Of, they're like every week, but yeah. it's available. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Ecclestone, come on, man. Yeah. And this, before we move on, let me just talk about Gerard Lopez here because this is the perfect timing. Yeah. Because this is the team principal for uh, sorry, the, the Lotus boss, the boss man. And uh, I just got a quote here. There's a big article. But basically all the same stuff we're talking about. He goes, uh, Formula One TV ratings are declining steeply, whereas the show on track is exceptional, which I agree with. It's, it is. It's gotten, it is. I was very skeptical about these new engines. No, but, but it works they're, well. they're great. Albeit still improvable, Lopez said, the sport must reach out to the younger fans, namely engage them not only through TV, but above all through the internet and social media. Exactly. What's more, F1 does not have any genuine marketing department which is insane for being yeah. the biggest money sport in the fucking world, which means there exists a significant untapped potential for commercial opportunities. Oh, yeah. According to the experts I meet regularly with and who invest in other sports, obviously he's the team boss for Lotus, Formula One remains the only active activity offering a global platform yep. likely to year attract to world corporations, and yet there seems to be some sort of blockage. And it goes on, he's obviously under no illusions as to where the blame lies. Mm -hmm. Why do these potential sponsors never make the leap when they're only when they're not really daunted by the amounts requested in F1 or any other sport? You know, mm -hmm. any sports sponsorship is going to cost you tens of millions of dollars for a global sport. What's holding them back? Is it because of the sport's archaic management and organization, which we're talking about right now? While around nine hundred million dollars per year is redistributed to the teams. The system keeps giving too much to the haves and too little to the have-nots, which you can kind of see here with this yeah. group that they've put together, the strategy group. Yeah. The haves are at the top making the decisions, raking in money, and deciding that the have-nots shouldn't even get the prize money that they earned last year, like Manor, yeah. which is what Sahara Force India said. Fucking dude has... Malia has $750 million to his name <laughs> and he doesn't want this team to come back because they might compete with him. Maybe. How yeah. about just work harder and win some races? Anyways, I agree with Gerard Lopez heavily and I think a lot of people do that there's, mm. there's no way to watch this legitimately online. No. If you're in North America, you need well, I mean, CSN or NBC, which don't show all the races. Or a, or a racing for me invite that we're raffling. Yeah. Yes. He did it. He did it. And he today, did this it. week, show us your favorite corner. Yeah. But really, especially because a lot of these races are now in Asia, the Middle East, and Europe. If you want to watch them in North America, you have to stay up through the night. And you can't get Sky, which is, Sky or BBC, which are the best coverage. And they're pay services. Yeah, well, know, BBC is whatever. Are we, are we done with this? Uh, no, 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 no. Hang on. Uh, no, 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 no
as as I was talking about Arriba Bene. So Arriba Bene, I think he has he has he has the right mind, uh, and he's he's gonna do good things for the sport if he keeps thinking that way and if he mm-hmm. keeps talking the way that he has been talking. He's definitely driving, the, like he's helping drive the conversation to to the right places. Right. And 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 I'm and I'm glad that these two no nonsense guys are in what is pretty much the most important team in the Formula One. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 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 that they're making their opinions heard, even though a lot of teams have been pushing back. And obviously, there's going to be it's it, this is not going to happen overnight just because of the way that the politics work. Right. But maybe in 2017, we can we can look forward to in a couple of years seeing some radical, ridiculous changes, <laughs> and, and and that that will that will make the sport better. Um, but there is still that feeling, and th- that even you got uh, from earlier on, and that and then uh, Lopez is getting that. Yeah. If you if you if you go ahead one more, there there is somebody <laughs> behind the scenes, the puppet master, pulling the strings, <laughs> the l- that, literal strings with his raggy fingernails. Th- yeah, that that, that that something out there is impeding real change oh my God. from happening. And and and, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, but, I'm but, but, sure this dude saw that Ferrari concept and was like, Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Like, no, that's not fucking happening. Mm-hmm. Push it back to 2017. Come up with something new. Yeah, might have been his idea. But but the thing is, okay, so at one point in the 70s, yeah. Ecclestone bought the um, the 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 F1 uh, commercial rights and whatever, and he was tasked with the mission by the teams to generate as much money possible uh, from F1. And 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 the thing is that things that were true in that time mm-hmm. and things that were true and 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 unquestionable truths in the 70s and 80s are not so anymore no like totally. the, 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 the t- television alone is not the best way to reach mass audiences up until right. 10 years ago that was the only way yeah Ugh. but you know what i mean like yeah. and, 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 and and now you know for, for sport a, it's 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 increasingly not a, like it, not a not a not the best way to to reach mass audiences to reach mo- even just just do it for the money man i'm yeah. telling you like you there is way more money out there to be to be gathered from the internet but just because he doesn't understand how to do it right it, let me exp- even if he let does. me ex- let me explain even- it to you i i can i can lay it down step by step how you can satisfy the fans satisfy the the the, the teams get more money out of the internet than you could ever 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 be all, be be able to extract from from just television alone but just because he doesn't so he's he's he, uh, formula 1 management is a pretty small operation, like you said. That they don't, they don't even have like a proper marketing team, right? Because they're pushing uh, those. Uh, I didn't know that, but that's incredible. How how well, do they cause, not? Because they're pushing those responsibilities. I think yeah. To to the broadcaster, so they're saying okay, and not even the broadcaster. Like say like uh, Montreal, I yeah. get the promoters, right? I yeah. get emails from the city of Montreal advertising the race, right? Right. Yeah. Because I've been there. I bought tickets last year. They have my address. But Formula One should be saying. Not just to people that are in Canada that have bought tickets before, mm-hmm. who obviously are interested in going, but to the, everyone in the world. Yeah, here's the Montreal race. To, here's the Russia right, race. Right. Even even to everyone in Canada, I find I I am shocked and appalled as as a, as a person that wasn't born here, right, uh, and didn't live. You know, my most of my formative formative years I lived in Colombia, but when I moved here, like I I, I was shocked that people just. Don't know people on the English. They side don't of, know. You know yeah, people on the English side of Canada. They just are not aware about Formula One or, or that Canada even has one of the most important Formula One races and, yeah, and one, most, of, one of the most historic. All the drivers love it. Yeah, it's important. never leaving the calendar. To be honest, <laughs> like well, I, I'm telling you right now, this is the truth. A lot of people, like more, a lot of people, a big chunk of the world population knows about like like even just knows about what the hell Canada is because of the Grand Prix. Oh, that Grand Prix. More more than more than Jesus. the other people that like think of like, you know, the humanitarian missions that we have and whatever. Yeah, I yeah, guarantee yeah. you more the people in like had. fucking Thailand or whatever know about Canada because of the oh. Grand Prix. And this is a this is a this is a truth. I yeah. I knew about Canada 
because of the Grand Prix. Right. Like, you know, I was aware that Canada existed as a country, <laughs> really, because Canada, let's be honest, it doesn't make many news here and there. No, no. But, but, but then, when it does, it's an embarrassing fat man as a <laughs> Toronto fucking yeah. mayor. Rob yeah, I Ford. Guess, yeah, I guess. Like, Ford Nation. <laughs> oh. I did not vote for that man. Uh. <laughs> But but anyway, you, you know what I mean. Like so so it's 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 an untapped potential that in many many ways. But he's um, I, I think so that many w- ways. what we're dealing with right now is that an aging management that has that have been surrounded by a group of people that that they all sort of agree that the old way of doing things is the best way of doing things. Mm. Even though like he's the he is the FOM, mm. he owns the rights. He could be making so much more money. He gives oh, yeah. these exclusive deals to whatever Sky and or to BBC for half the races. Or yeah. But we talked about this before about like again, hockey has there is more than one service available to watch every game yeah. for something like two to three hundred bucks a year if you're into yeah. hockey. Mm-hmm. The UFC has it for their fight pass is kind of a joke, but you can at least you can go and watch the pay per views on YouTube even yeah. as a pay. But you can go to YouTube your credit card within 10 seconds you're watching a pay-per-view through youtube these guys <clears throat> i watch the race however i can i don't have a cable subscription yeah yeah i don't have a cable subscription either either no, we, we have managed to however you to, can to watch the race uh, here and there <laughs> if you know what i mean <laughs> but you know what i mean i would be willing to pay whatever a comparable amount i guess would be maybe two or three hundred bucks a year compared mm. if you compare to other sports but to watch the 20 races live in HD on the internet without having to pay a cable company. Yep. It's reason it would be even reasonable at that price. You're mm-hmm. paying fifteen or twenty bucks for a race weekend. I'd pay it's, that. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. That's, it's not available though yeah. because of that man yeah. and his and, but, distaste for the internet. But but we and and, and we have another People thing. Use the internet. That that I, I wanna Sorry, my bladder's weak. I wanna I wanna point at that right now, so it's for a sport that started primarily in Europe, but now has a global audience of maybe half a billion people Mm -hmm. watch Formula One uh, across the year. You say like half a billion people watch, like 500 million people watch every race? No, not every no, race. Not I think, race. I think, I think, I think general uh, fans and uh, such. Yeah, I think, I think the the audience of Formula One okay, has been said to be half a billion. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so what? What is it like? One fourteenth of the world is uh, is into F one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But at one point, but either way, I, for a sport that started, you know, primarily in Europe, but has seen uh, players from around the world, um, Formula One may not be. Mm-hmm. in the position at any point or another to call or to, to call the top the, the, the top spot of sport in any given country you know what I mean like not mm-hmm. even not even in Italy not even in Britain when uh, where, where Formula One has a, a big foothold you cannot say that Formula One is the, the biggest most, the biggest sport right in each one of this on the, of those countries right but but to me, that is that is something that is intrinsic to the sport. The sport is Formula One is not going to appeal to to to, uh, to the most uh, you know to the biggest part of the population. Right. Um, Formula One doesn't have to like categorize uh, you know limit itself to that because to me, Formula One may not ever be able to call the number one spot in any single country. But it but is it, everywhere. Yeah, but it can be the number one sport wo- worldwide right it can be it has mm-hmm. every, sing- every two single every single thing it was yeah well no but and i think it might have dropped off a little since but then. But, you, but you know what i mean it's it's it's, it's it, it, a lot of the uh, a lot of the things right now like a, a lot of things that are impeding the growth of formula 1 is that because you cannot advertise Formula One, and you cannot like expect the amount of audiences of uh, from Formula One that you know. As I say, let's let's pick a country right now. Any country, let's pick the U.S. Mm-hmm. You can't have the amount of audience, like the level of audience that say the Super Bowl has in in F1 mm-hmm. because because that is that is just not it's not built into the culture. It's not built into this. But what what F1 can strive to get is to be the biggest sport worldwide and that is something that is actually right now with with adva- with the internet with with streaming capabilities right now this is yeah. totally possible and 
Maybe uh, not with Bernie Ecclestone. Well, well then, and that's right. And th th that's what management needs to see right now, that they need to, just as one point in the history of Formula One, um, the decision was made to expand outside of Europe. We need to see the bigger <laughs> picture. And we need to, to rally up. And I Sorry. commend... Sorry, I got, I got, it got all fucked up. It's okay, it's okay. No, we need to rally up behind this man... And we need to follow his ideals. 